You're about to listen to a podcast full of wonder, excitement, and discovery. It's time for an adventure through Odyssey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Adventures Through Odyssey podcast, Odyssey Revisited. I'm Will here with John for our October news roundup. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, the September news roundup never showed up. Yeah, we had a little audio glitch that was also in the Eugene episode that I had to remedy. So I, most of the episode has been fixed, but because this month's club episode ties so heavily into the comics, I'm going to cut our September discussion from the comics into this one, and I'll release the rest of the episode Will shortly. Will doesn't tell me these things. Will just, like, fails to mention there's an audio glitch, which I wonder where that glitch occurred. Hmm. Um, actually, I hate to say this, there was an echo on your mic. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's my thing. Does it sound like there's an echo on my mic right now? No, but it was because of how we had the setup. I changed it this time. Hmm. So we're slowly but surely getting there, people. But anyway, uh, so October was both kind of a busy and not so busy month for Odyssey. So I think our biggest piece of news was we had the Album 76 artwork reveal. Keep it together. Okay. So Four first of all, kids I'm... walking down the street. Yes. About it. Yeah. So I, I do just want to say, I hate this thing Focus on the Family is doing where they tease the album art reveal. Not that they're teasing it, but then for through the week, they release little snippets of it. Just, just say it's coming on Friday and show the whole thing at once. It's more surprising that way. Yeah. Especially because, I mean, I guess the Bernard drop in the last album, you're like, oh, like that's like a big deal. Right. But, like, you know, if right, if there's not anything purely, like, shocking on the covers, which most covers don't have anything shocking on them. That is true. And I think it um, spoils the fun. Yeah. It's like, just, yeah, just drop it on Fridays. I totally agree. So, they didn't release any uh, synopsis with this one. So, just, you know, it's Suzu, Cooper... Emily and Maury walking down the road yeah, with the sun rising behind them. And I have loved the fan edits where they where like people have put Dr. Blackard, Jay, Matthew in the sun behind them as if they're the villain of the piece. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I will say this. I think they, the design, what happened to the kid designs? Because this is not an appealing cover, cover aesthetically. Uh, I don't know. I mean... It's not horrible, but... I, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Why does there's Emily... A lot of, there's a lot of blank space. There's a lot of blank space. They're walking past the church, which I like. Yeah. Why? Cooper is so much taller than everybody else. For some reason, Emily seems to have anime eyes. Maury has a gut. Okay, that's not that important, but... I feel like... I didn't think he had a gut. But I'm looking at, oh, that might just be how his shirt is drawn. I think it's how his shirt is drawn, Will. Okay, I, I apologize to Maury and his voice actor. Um, and then, I, yeah. I was about to say, am I wrong in thinking this is the first time we've seen Susu drawn? But no, she was on the escape room cover. Yeah. It's hard because... I mean, they're, they're recognizable, but I mean, like, I guess be fair. I didn't probably like, I couldn't always identify like the cover of like the kids on the old covers. Like, I mean, I think there, there's the cover with Robin for just in time where I think it's Robin and it's not at all how I think I would have pictured Robin. I do kind of agree, but so, yeah. So it just, and to, again, to extrapolate a little more, it's called keep it together. So the team is probably going to face some rupture that will blow them apart <laughs> i also because it's the four of them i love the implication that the team is not getting bigger yeah i mean i'm still like don't even remember cooper being on the team <laughs> yeah cooper joined the team in the last the well, last time there was a team episode because remember they were blackmailing him yeah so I, I i feel like they just realized we need a fourth person so now we've got like this burger king kids club looking poster do we think the Parkers are gone? Uh, I think it's possible. I mean, we still, we had Emily's Faith arc recently, but it does kind of I feel mean, like... I mean, we complain about the Parkers, I know, but it's just kind of like, are they just gone? Maybe. It is kind of interesting to think that the Parkers are gone, but Emily, who was also here when the show rebooted... Yeah, that's that's the weird thing, right? It's not like they're doing a slow transition 
Um, but then I mean, they bring character. It's weird. Like the the environment they have is weird right now. With like the because one, I mean, some of it they just brought over Kidsboro characters, right? But then what was the um? Who's the basketball kid? I always forget about Trey. Trey, yeah. Sorry, I forget his name. He wasn't. He was there. Wait. No, no, no. Cooper's the basketball kid. Trey's the other one. Trey's his brother. Right, right. right. But who's the one? Yeah, yeah, Cooper. Sorry, I. He was at the reboot too, right? I don't think so. I feel like he okay, was maybe I'm thinking there was some kid who played basketball in like the first album or two that they came back, and then um, do you remember? I think he was also getting blackmail. Like they stole the mascot. Oh yeah, it's that kid. And for some reason, I thought they brought him back at one point, but I could be wrong. Just keep talking. Well, let me double check. But okay, so I know I made the joke about the Burger King Kids Club. We're not going to get into that. What this really reminded me of the moment I saw it was a VBS poster. Yeah, it's a little bit like that. In the sense that, like, you walk into one of the classrooms that where it's like Bible time, and hey, kids, look at these fun characters you get to meet over the week. Or did did your VBS not do that? I don't know. Uh, it was Ryan Cummings. Okay. Yeah, that's the girl. That's the guy Jules jilted at prom. Uh, yeah, it, it, that's what it was. It was like he suddenly shows back up, and I because I feel like he was gone right. for a while. Yeah, yeah, it was. You're too kind. The holy hoopster. He was gone for a hundred episodes, and then was in unfair game, and then he was gone for a hundred and forty episodes, and shows up in King of My Heart, and then yes. is showing up in Alibis. Yeah, exactly. So on one hand, it's a trend Odyssey is doing that I like, that they're not just creating new characters out of whole cloth. When they need a character, they'll bring somebody back. It is a little weird, though, that this teenager disappears for five years and suddenly returns. Yeah, it just throws off any passage of time, right? Because you're kind of like, oh, it's almost like a, a nice transition into new characters. But then you're like, what? Yeah, exactly. Then they bring back this character at almost the exact same age, and you're like, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, should we get into the episode? Uh, well, we still have to do the comics, but uh, yeah, oh. so I just wanted to also say they did not re reveal any episodes, just the one where Jules joins a band called Macaroni Ravioli and the Rydell Realizations Parts 1, 2, and 3. Yep. Uh, yeah, so look, I know this is a no-win scenario again. I will say this. It is starting to... It, I am starting to note that the albums are now... Again, they are solely for ca the character arc moving forward, but now they're almost all taken up by a multi-part story. Yeah, which is, like, they're fun. I mean, and, like, part of the problem is they have so many current arcs that you almost, they're almost like, we just gotta do a chunk. We gotta, like... Exactly. Now, I think get through some of these, but... I, I totally agree. And I, I think part of that is because it's streaming, they need to get you to come back week to week. Now, I would be fine with standalone episodes. Did you read the monthly comic? I did read the monthly comic. Wow, that's a first. Um, So, what did you think of it? Oh, you mean the one on the app, right? Not the one on Instagram. That is correct. There's not one on Instagram. Okay. I mean, it's on Instagram, uh, but it's also on the app. Oh, I mean, wait. So it's the Halloween the one. one. It's the Wooten uh, Halloween. I, I didn't read that one then. <laughs> okay, so Wooten and Penny are in wit's end, and Wooten's getting dressed for Halloween, and Penny says, Wooten, isn't that costume going to scare the kids? It's the new Captain Absolutely villain, which kind of looks like Bible Man Darth Vader. Cool. Yeah, so Wooten puts it on, puts the helmet on, Jason walks in and thinks it's a like a government spy and body slams Wooten into the floor. That's, I mean, okay, that's a pretty funny joke. But also in reality, yes, Putin would be dead. Well, yeah. Well, also Jason would under probably know. Oh, it's Halloween. Well, right. Exactly. Yeah. No, sorry. Uh, so the comic ends with Putin and Penny now dressed as a chicken and an egg. It's a very cute comic. And, like, I get Jason, and they kind of write it off as, well, I have all that secret agent training that just kicks in at a moment's notice. So, to me, it's one of those, it's a funny gag. It's not, I don't know how uh, wholesome that felt. 
All right. So I was going to say the next part of the episode is us moving on to the comics. However, this month's comic, you know, this yeah. comic does kind of dive into the episode so much. I'm just going to, we'll just talk Which about it. I like, I don't think, I, I don't mind the idea of having like comics that directly tie in. Oh, definitely. So let's talk about the club episode. Extended cut. Fans of a movie about Odyssey descend upon the town for a festival that earns mixed reviews. It's interesting, right? Yes. I don't think it's a bad episode. But I don't really know what it's... Like, it, okay. I guess the idea is, you know, they bring... it's At first, it's kind of this fun, like, jokey. And, you're, and you know, Connie's worried about her character, even though it was, like, previously cut. Yes. Which is exactly how she was at the, in the original episode. Was right. worried about her character was being portrayed. Um... But then it does take a, but it's like kind of joking about it. And I thought the vibe of the episode was going to be about like, I mean, it's kind of not worrying about like, about what people think about. Well, I don't know. It, it But it is kind of worrying about what people think about you for a, a, some degree. Right. Um, And then they bring back the actress who played Connie. Yes. And, you know, everything's fine. And then we get to this, the Q&A. Yes. Right, they, there's so many jokes. The wit doll is very funny. Yes. No, that, think, that was great. I think talking about, like, the jokes about the movie, Jay, what Jay's doing it, I feel like the, I have to talk to Jay about lying. I have to talk a, to Jay about, like, good hygiene. Yes, that was a highlight that, of the episode for that me. That was a hilarious joke. Um... But then you get this Q&A, which is funny to start. But then you get this little girl almost saying something that I don't think anyone would necessarily, like, very rarely would you have a kid going up and say, like, you taught me I don't have to be smart or I don't have to put in effort. I can just be dumb. Yeah, so here's the thing. I, I question that, not because I think people should be dumb, but I do think it's important to tell kids you don't have to be the smartest or the most accomplished to make a difference. Well, well, which is right, not where this episode is going. But Right, but it is funny funny that they like because connie's like insecure about it which i do think is is a little much because she was insecure in the original episode and it's been like i mean i in odyssey right it's probably been like five to ten years something like that yeah but so in reality it's been like 30 like i don't maybe not 30 but like 20 years 20 25 years yeah 20 25 years and it's like i don't know if i need this the it's like oh connie didn't have to deal with her stress about that because she just was cut from the movie which i'll say this with the comic i don't know how you cut connie from the movie if she's literally with them while they're collecting these things unless they just refilmed all of it yeah, well, and because they make that joke at one point where Connie's in the comic where Connie says, wait, what's my character doing there? And Jewel says, according to the notes, there was a deleted scene that explained it, but they never filmed it. Right, which is fun, but it's yeah. like... Right, but it, look, I, I love the vibe that comic gives off that in the reality of Odyssey, this movie is some cult classic. Yeah. But... Yeah, so before we get to, like, the Dana Moi of the episode, I would like to say, I really enjoyed this episode. You know, earlier in the earlier in the year when we did the road, the Adopt a Road episode, I said I'd hit an upper limit with Jay and how obnoxious or trying to be funny he can be. If He was turned up to 11 in this episode, but I think it really worked because everybody in the story knew it was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, at least everyone in the story who we're following. Right. And I think that works. I mean, Jay's a funny character, but yeah, you gotta kind of lean... The characters have to be like, Jay, stop it. Yes. Now, uh, this is the one thing. Yo, know, Jules is from Hollywood, and I'm, surp I'm surprised she had never heard of this movie. Maybe she didn't know it was set about Odyssey, but it's a, it's interesting, like, if this movie is this cult classic that you can pull together a fan group for it... Well, I get the sense where they're talking about it they're like well it's kind of a flop but then the director's cut came out and it's like this surging fan base came yeah. out okay so that was one kind of funny thing so a lot of times when kids shows or shows in general do a we're gonna shoot a big budget movie with one of the characters the payoff is either oh the movie got canceled or we're going in a different direction you're fired in the world of odyssey the decision was the movie was so bad nobody saw it so 
in the age of streaming, it completely makes sense this movie would rear its head again. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I don't think it's a crazy premise. Let me ask you a question, though. What do you think this episode was about? Don't judge a book by its cover? Well, yeah, I, that's kind of what it is, right? It's because at the end, they're like, King David was just a shepherd. and <laughs> Exactly. When they start talking about King David, I'm like, okay, I get at least that kind of ties in. But I think it only ties into the third act. My problem is they introduce the con. They are having so much fun with like bringing back this concept and like with the crazed fans that they don't get to the Heather stuff until like halfway through. Yeah. And they're way to like justify like oh you shouldn't judge heather by her cover because she i don't know it's like they kind of want to say like she did the wrong thing or like she leaned into being the dumb blonde and that was bad for her career which is a little weird but then it's like oh but she couldn't get a job so guess what she became a doctor but more than that she's back and she's doing stuff on the hallmark channel oh i'm sorry the emblem channel yes Okay, so I do want to say, if you go back and listen to the original Day in the Life episode, Heather Shapley is a kind of mean-spirited joke. Yeah. Like, it is surprising how mean it is looking back. So I'm sure this was part of their way of rectifying that. Uh, I do agree they go a little too far, and I know this would have spoiled the episode, but they could have said, hey, the director's cut came out because Heather Shapley made a career comeback, and they want to show her part in the movie. Because that totally feels like something a studio would do. I don't know if you know this story. So in the original Little Shop of Horrors, not the musical, the movie that came out in like seven, the 70s, Jack Nicholson has a two-scene appearance. And in between them filming the movie and it coming out, Jack Nicholson blew up. So they paced Jack Nicholson all over the marketing, even though he's only in two scenes of the movie. I'm not trying to be dumb. I watched that a few months ago. Where is Jack Nicholson in that movie? The original, not the musical. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Right, so just so everyone knows, there's a non-musical version of Little Shop of Horrors. It might actually be free to watch on YouTube because no one bothered to keep the rights. But yeah, but like, so the here's what's weird to me. So right, they're they're saying don't judge a book by its cover, and I don't think it's bad. I think having it both be <laughs> she became a doctor and she's made an acting comeback. Is a little much, I think, especially because they never really give a great answer to why she doesn't try to correct that girl. Yeah, I do agree. Like, like I, I agree. I don't think you have, like, I don't think it's bad to say, like, oh, like, but, like, it's almost, like, the girl's, like, going forward, like, oh, you can be dumb and, like, airheaded is almost what right. she's saying. And if she, and if Heather was really, like a doctor and trying to make a serious acting comeback. I don't know why she didn't like agree with Connie, not like against her. I think Connie was wrong for like trying to slam Heather. Right. But I yeah. feel like it's weird. And then she didn't also stand up and say like, that's not what you should take. Well, this okay. was a fun thing, but this was something in the past and we shouldn't like, right. So here's the one thing I will say earlier in the episode, Heather comes up to Jay and says she wants some stuff in her contract changed. I kind of wonder, and I'd love to know who wrote up this contract for Jay. So, I think Jay probably wrote it himself. Right. It would not surprise me that, like, maybe in her contract, she's not allowed to go against that. So. Well, maybe. But then he, they should have said that. She should have been like, I hated what that girl was saying. But Jay in my contract said I couldn't speak out against. Exactly. No, there needed like, to be a clear delineation. And I just feel like it's like they want you to really recognize quickly that it's like, oh, she's a doctor. She's smart. Or like she's like doing serious acting where you couldn't see her face. So it's like, you know, it's good acting. And Connie also has seen it and know it's good acting rather than like it's just such, it's a weird concept because they want to bring back this character and like show you that she is. But they do like the most extreme example, which isn't bad again. It's just, like, noticeable. I will say this. I was convinced, not that this would have been bad, but it's weird because I wonder if in the original script if she was going to be in, like, a Christian movie. Because let's be fair, Hallmark Channel isn't, right. like, a Christian channel. But they, I mean, did maybe a lot of face, they did face a lot of pushback when they added a gay character to one of their Christmas movies, so. Well, yeah. So, I mean, there's a big Christian audience to the Hallmark Channel. Right. 
Um, I know I did, there was some other one that now people watch instead of Hallmark. Right, that Candace Cameron Burr started, so. Yeah, so like, but when Wit's talking, I mean, but it's clearly supposed to be Hallmark, because Hallmark, Emblem, they're like two, like. And Connie says, I love their Christmas movies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I thought she came back to star in some Christian movie. Okay, so here's the thing. I thought, and I know the club episodes kind of moved away from plugging ministries. I thought maybe the voice actress for Heather was somebody who was on The Chosen. Oh, I mean, that could be, right? It, I mean, it, it isn't. I want to be clear. I'm saying I thought, is this going to turn into, let's talk about The Chosen and how great it is for two minutes? Well, the one issue is, I don't know... I mean, I'm sure people at Focus on the Family like The Chosen, but there's a whole problem that's connected. Not prob. Well, okay. Some Christians are upset that it's connected to the, the Mormon uh, church. The Mormon church. Yeah. And so I could see Focus not wanting to directly do that. But right, I thought they were going to make something where it's like, I came back to act because of this Christian movie. And I felt like it was important. <laughs> Yet Which- another person connected to Connie becomes a Christian. Well, yeah. But it's like, Right? It's like Wit says she came... It's almost like he's saying she came back for some, like, really a, a special thing. Unless they're just saying, like, all oh, Harmark is basically, like, a good, wholesome Christian. Like, it's, like, weird. All right. Yeah, I, I do totally agree with that. But, so, yeah, to... I, I Honestly, I thought it was a good reckoning. I get the sneaking suspicion Heather might move in if we have to can Jillian for some reason. <laughs> that would be funny. But... Anyway, I did want to point out a few other things about you this episode. You think this is the original voice actress? It is not. I just looked. Okay. It is somebody else. And actually, I want to talk about the first scene of Heather where someone says, you, you, can, you can't miss her. I thought, oh no. She's a mean-spirited enough joke in the first episode. Please do not tell me they're going to say she got fat. Oh, that would have been real bad. Right, but you can the way it was phrased, I was like, oh no, please don't tell me that's what you're doing, focus on the family. Because I, I will say this, I was kind of on Connie's side up until that conference, because it's like, okay, I get it. I understand why this would probably yeah. be a, it a does, challenge. It does kind of just, it's the same thing we've talked about with Connie, where I'm like, really? Like, I get, it's just like, I want, I feel like I want some character development for Connie. Yeah, okay, and this is what I want to talk to you about. Remember how a while ago you said there's no joy in Connie and Jules' relationship? Yeah. You know how, you know who had a lot of joy in their relationship in this episode? Wit and Jules. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, but like, Shona and Andre Stoika have such great chemistry. I kind of want, good. like, I kind of want a few Wit and Jules episodes. Yeah, I mean, I think they have some good... That, w- that would be a fun character dynamic. Right, because we kind of... It would basically be kind of an old-school Wit and Connie pairing to an extent. Yeah, exactly. It's weird because right now, it's like they've kept... They've, like, made Connie's personality a little more adult, but have kept her, like, teenage young adult problems, I feel like. Like, her tendencies to just be, like, like burst things out. I exactly which isn't horrible but it's like at this point I feel like so many characters have overcome things that they've I, had it's just like well it's all like you removed not that Connie's not fun I think there's parts in the episode where she is fun yeah but like it's just like I feel like you either need to keep the character how she was and just say this is who she is and like play up like the funny aspects and like the funny time she would like burst out stuff yeah and also then keep like but it's like weird to like try to make her seem more mature and more like a mother to jewels or like an adult to jewels but then have her have these same issues over and over i totally agree again we've teased that like they might be doing something with that like, because they've recognized, like, in the in the Eugene one, where she's like, why do I keep doing this? Exactly. I don't know if she says that, but she has the thing with wit. Like, how do you not, like, do this? But it, I'm, I'm curious. I was just kind of, like, at the press conference. I'm like, oh, what a surprise. I mean, and but it's also weird because they were like, well, we don't want Connie to seem crazy. So we'll have the most unrealistic girl come. And say, because of you, I figured that I don't have to try. I don't have to be smart. I can just be like you, Connie. Teehee. 
Okay, right. And this is, this is something I'll get back to when we talk about the podcast behind the scenes stuff. They do definitely ha- kind of have not a flattering representation of fandom in this episode. But yeah. Right. So, yeah, I agree. We had to like get Connie pushed to the limit. I think there are ways we could have done that without. Yeah. Without making this little girl look stupid. Like maybe it's behind the scenes and not everyone has to watch it or something. But yeah. Anyway. About 22 minutes. Anyway, um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Um, okay, so I do want to go back to a few things at the top before the total shift of the episode. Uh, you know, this is like the second time or third time Connie has mentioned she'll never get a certain streaming service, although one of them was Nova Plus, so I kind of get that. Yeah. I, I, I love this thought that, like, in the Novacom reboot, whenever they bring back Novacom, the joke is they come to Odyssey because, well, no one in, our ta- in your town subscribes to Nova Plus. <laughs> We need to figure out why. That'd be a really funny joke. (laughs) Yeah. But I also then don't know what the purpose of that episode is, because then you get into, it'd have to be, like, reconciling with, like, past sins, almost. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, I I would like that, but I feel like that's a touchy subject. Yes. Not Uh, touchy. I mean, obviously, like, sin will find you out. But, like, having seen, like, well, it wasn't, no one at the company who was there that time is there anymore it's like well but what those other people did still like affected people here like i feel like i'm fine them doing an episode about that but i also feel like some some people may say they're talking about something else (laughs) yeah i kind of agree i know that some christians have issues with which again i don't i want stuff like that but yeah no absolutely uh, so, and again, I know it's a fictional show, so it's just they never thought to put it in a script. It is interesting that no one has ever come to the town. <laughs> like, what could have said, oh, I've had one or two crazed fans show up in the past, but I was always able to shoo them off or something. Well, yeah, right? Like, I think saying something like that would have been natural, being like, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, like, once or twice a year, I have someone come in and take some pictures. Exactly. So. All right, so I, and I actually kind of liked that, you know, Wit was never, like, super angry about the movie in the original episode. He's just like, you know, what, how can a movie really capture the magic of Odyssey? But any, I do like that he finds stuff to laugh at in the movie. Again, I totally get why Connie feels a little hurt by her portrayal in the movie, especially because they add the Eugene subplot. I agree, but that's why I thought the episode was going in a different direction because I thought it was wick- it was going to almost be about like laughing at yourself. Yes. Or like just like not letting sometimes what people think of you like taking that seriously. Yeah. And they could have done that like because that's like the vibe of the first half, right? Wit's just like it's not me. Right. And then I think he sees the movie because it sounds like in the episode nobody actually watched the movie. Well, at the end of the episode, right, they, like, leave the screening early. Right. So. So, yes, and it's so not Odyssey at all. So, let, speaking of the screen, let's talk a little bit about the comics. So, we're going to quickly put in our talk about it from the last September episode. They choose the most, they were literally at the beginning, they're like, listen to this episode or you will not know what's going on. <laughs> The most context heavy thing you could do which is basically wit connie and jules watching the extended cut of the movie from the day in the life episode from like album 12 or something yes now i do love when we cut 14. back to jules mystery science theater in the movie and everyone being pissed at her but just mm-hmm. commenting on how weird it is so i love this because i always love looking at the fake media because like although it's not one of my favorite episodes one of my favorite things bojack horseman did was they released an episode on netflix that was just a full episode of the fake tv show that existed within the universe kids don't go watch that show kids do go watch that show no kids do not go watch that show the age 12 demographic is not listening to this podcast i don't know who's listening to this podcast yeah i mean it's it's fun now i will say this now this is also a show kids don't go watch this I don't remember if they called Eugene, like, they called the Eugene character Rick in the original episode, but they were definitely going for the Rick and Morty vibes. You mean with the green portal? The green portal, and it's Rick, 
And I'm like, you clearly know what you're doing. Clearly, like, someone, like, they know, like, the Odyssey people don't know about Rick and Morty. And so they're like, slide this in. Right, so and here's what I actually really like about the movie. It, it, the, the fake movie they present, although I feel like it contradicts some of the things they say about the movie in the actual episode... It very much feels like the 1990s adaptation of Adventures in Odyssey some studio would have made. Yeah, where they're like, well, they time travel and it's this kid and... Right, the imagination station's a ring. It's like, it's sort of the show, but not at all the show. Yeah. It's funny. It. I wonder how long it's gonna go. I was about to say, like, this is a 30... Pa- another 30 panel arc i don't 100 percent know if that's gonna go well now maybe like they'll break through the screen or something I well don't know. it's it's really fun because it's fun to visually see some parts of the film right now to be this would also have been like a fun animated episode agree like just cut to connie jules and wit in the theater watching it every now and again getting annoyed but but i don't think they've done a more classic old school fans servicey episode I, I agree, and I also kind of like this trip. because it's always been this weird thing of they shot a movie about this town and the people living in it, and it never comes up. And set in this town. <laughs> like, like it, it was filmed there. Uh, it, it, it's, it's fun to see. It's certainly fun. I think it's cool. I I hope they go somewhere interesting with it. Or not even interesting, just like keep the silliness up. But I do kind of... The one thing I... Re-looking through these really quick. That, honestly, Eugene being the main... The Eugene stand-in being the main character makes sense. Because that totally feels like something a producer would say. Like, we can't have the old man do it. Get a young guy and have him play that part. They choose the most... They're literally at the beginning. They're like, listen to this episode or you will not know what's going on. The most context-heavy thing you could do, which is basically Wit, Connie, and Jules watching the extended cut of the movie from the Day in the Life episode. From, like, album 12 or something. Yes. Now, I do love when we cut back to Jules' mystery science theater in the movie and everyone being pissed at her, but just (laughs) commenting on how weird it is. So, I love this because I always love looking at the fake media because like although it's not one of my favorite episodes one of my favorite things bojack horseman did was they released an episode on netflix that was just a full episode of the fake tv show that existed within the universe kids don't go watch that show kids do go watch that show no kids do not go watch that show the age of 12 demographic is not listening to this podcast i don't know who's listening to this podcast yeah i mean it's it's fun now, I will say this. Now, this is also a show, kids, don't go watch this. I don't remember if they called Eugene, like, they called the Eugene character Rick in the original episode. But they were definitely going for the Rick and Morty vibes. You mean with the green portal? The green portal, and it's Rick. And I'm like, you clearly know what you're doing. Clearly, like, someone, like, they know, like, the Odyssey people don't know about Rick and Morty. And so they're like, slide this in. Right, so and here's what I actually really like about the movie. It, it the, the fake movie they present, although I feel like it contradicts some of the things they say about the movie in the actual episode... It very much feels like the 1990s adaptation of Adventures in Odyssey some studio would have made. Yeah, where they're like, well, they time travel and it's this kid and... Right, the Imagination Station's a ring. It's like, it's sort of the show, but not at all the show. Yeah. It's funny. It. I wonder how long it's gonna go. I was about to say, like, this is a 30... Pa- another 30 panel arc. I don't 100% know if that's going to go well. Now, maybe like they'll break through the screen or something. Well, it's, it's really fun because it's fun to visually see some parts of the film. Right now to be, this would also have been like a fun animated episode. Agree. Like just cut to Connie Jules and wait in the theater, watching it every now and again, getting annoyed, but, but I don't think they've done a more classic old school fans 
servicey episode. I I agree, and I also kind of like this because it's always been this weird thing of they shot a movie about this town and the people living in it, and it never comes up. And set in this town, <laughs> like like it it was filmed there. Uh, it it it's it's fun to see. It's certainly fun. I think it's cool. I I hope they go somewhere interesting with it, or not even interesting, just like keep the silliness up. But I do kind of the one thing I re looking through these really quick that honestly Eugene being the main the Eugene stand and being the main character makes sense because that totally feels like something a producer would say like we can't have the old man do it get a young guy and have him play that part all right that was back yeah that was interesting but yeah I still stand by my thought that they did a very good job parodying a 90s movie that doesn't quite get the source material I agree. I think the next parts are fine. I think it maybe went a little too long. Well, they clearly wanted to line up with the episode. My favorite part at the end, though, was when he said, hopefully we'll have more oh, that, fun in Odyssey, fun. the town of adventures. And they're like, something about that doesn't sound quite right. Yes, I did appreciate the slight fourth wall break there. I did like that. Right. But, Ode- but Odyssey, the town of adventures, also 100% sounds how that 90s movie would have ended. Um, I agree. Maybe the next episode about this, they'll make a sequel. I mean, legacy sequels are all the rage. It's a reboot. (laughs) Or it's Odyssey Space Jam 2. I mean, you could... I mean, that would be, like, an interesting, like... I mean, you could see Jay trying to do, like, a documentary. The real Odyssey. Yes. I mean, that would be a funny episode. It's like jay the real odyssey and then he's trying to like put stuff like that's in the that oh that would be good i want him to try to bring a camera into the imagination station that would be great and they have to explain it's like wait it didn't capture anything well right because the camera doesn't have an imagination (laughs) can we send that to someone at odyssey to put into a script because that's a great joke uh, that would be really funny. It's like, but I was gonna have a whole part about like us going back in time. Jay, you can only go back in time in your imagination, <laughs> not on a screen. But I always assumed the imagination station was kind of screen based. I don't know. They've never really explained it. So, because especially now that you have to walk through rooms, I have to assume there's some level of. Yeah. Screen technology, right? Anyway, maybe maybe the new video series will explain this. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to assume you did not listen to the official podcast episode about this. No. So they interview the writer. Well, first they talk about sequel episodes and how rarely they've done any. Then one of the then Jesse makes a joke and Clara returned in that. Oh wait, that hasn't aired yet. Okay, so 50 50 50 that's an, that was true. <laughs> So, I feel like Clara is, if you were to pull strings of old Odyssey threads, Clara's the one to go to. I mean, it would be cool if they brought Clara back, but don't you, I feel like, I mean, would you bring back Jack Allen? Um, maybe, maybe they reunite for Jack Allen's funeral? I'm just saying the voice actor died. I know that's a little morbid, but... I wonder, right, like, okay, here's the thing. There's a few things they could, if they're actually bringing back Clara, there's a few things you could do. You could have her be, like, the head of some mission about, yeah. or like, adopting children or orphanages. Yes. That's the easy. It is. Like, bring her back. Um, I mean, if they're actually exploring, like, Wit's emotions... That would be the place to do it, wouldn't it? That or his family would be the place to do it, right? Like, yeah. Having like this thing where he's trying to like shove it all down, but like he recognizes he still has anger about that situation. Yeah. I (laughs) mean, but it's hard because the end of Clara is so much not that. It's so much like being like, I'm fine. Like she's happy. But maybe, like, she, he's sad that he missed out on some of these. Right. Or it could be, like, a really good episode about Wit sometimes maybe making rash decisions. 
or bad decisions. Like adopting Clara would have been a bad decision for him no matter what. And thankfully he was stopped. But then we have things like Maury and Emily where he kind of let that play out to see what would happen because they're special. And you could argue those are kind of... Yeah. Similar thoughts. Yeah, it's... It'll be interesting to say the least. I mean, if they bring her back, I mean, because here's the thing: if it's just for like an like an agency for like orphans, and it's like to, to sponsor and let people know about that, that's like low stakes. Like yeah. an emotional bringing back for wit that has something to do with his storyline. That's like kind of high stakes. Yeah, I It'd totally agree. To bring back, but. That's such a weird pull, right? Like, if you're gonna make a joke pull, like, joke pull, like, something with, like, oh, Jimmy Barkley. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Or, like, say some real obscure character. And Galara is obscure, but it's, like, such an obscure pull where it's a character who's never actually been to Odyssey. We have just heard about her from other characters. Right, well, and we've only ever heard... Only Eugene knows about her. So, oh, here's what you could do. Connie makes a new friend, and it's Clara, and she brings her to Wit's End, and Wit has a crisis. And that'd be interesting. And it'd be a good, it'd at least be something to give Connie to do, but... Yeah. Okay. So, there's that. And maybe a good discussion topic episode would be, like, sequel episodes we want to see. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, I think they are likely to be not because i think they know there are fans who be into that and i think now that there is the club it's not i'm sure a lot of people are listening to the backlogs absolutely and i think they've done like it i think it gets people interested again and it's not like they didn't pull back characters in old odyssey i think it's just that like like or old characters didn't show up i think you're right like, I mean, Jimmy coming back in Washington, D.C. is like a what? But it's like, I'm sure people were excited about that. That's very true. No, that when that happened. was a good moment. And I think it was because George Barkley was the wedding officiator for some reason. I also wonder if at one point they were going to write Connie off the show as they wanted to give her a bit of a... Anyway. Not yeah. a... So in the episode, they interview the writer. And it's the guy who does the comic. And there's definitely a slight Odyssey comic vibe to the writing of this episode. Not in a bad way. I just noted it. Yeah. Okay, so he said what happened was he wrote the, you know, movie comic and someone in the writer's staff said, oh, an episode about the movie would be kind of a cool idea. So, you know, because the, the comic kind of serves as this bonus scene of the episode now. Yeah. So they write that. Originally, it was going to be more about fan culture, and you can definitely see that in the first part of this episode. Mm-hmm. And the negativity to that. So... The one thing that really stood out to me is, did you feel something missing in, in this episode? Um, what? So, Will Ryan died in 2021, and this is the first episode that feels like there's a Eugene-shaped hole in it. Yeah, I think that's fair, right? Because, especially in the comic, Eugene was like, like, the Eugene's character is almost like the lead along with the kid. Yeah, well, so here's the interesting thing. There was a deleted scene, you can hear it on the club, where Connie calls Eugene. And they said they took it out because of it was slowing down the episode. That reminds me of the 2011 Winnie the Pooh movie where they took out a couple scenes because it was slowing down the 52-minute movie. Um, <laughs> okay, look, I don't know if the club episodes air on the radio in other countries. It's a club episode. I, I, I respect their restraint for not doing 45-minute club episodes. You could have given 45 seconds to Connie calling Eugene. Yeah. Yeah, so the scene is basically, Connie calls Eugene, and you only hear gibberish over the phone, and it's like, Eugene, you won't believe what they did to the movie. If I was going to jest, would I make this up? Yeah, I'm full of consternation, too, I think. Yeah. So, like that, now maybe there was more to the scene, but that's what they had recorded, so. It's hard, right, because they probably don't want every time, like, Eugene should be there to just, like, do that, but. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean. It, it it's noticed like i thought like oh if eugene was if will ryan was still alive eugene would be in this episode yeah no which I, is the only issue with doing legacy episodes now 
is that you don't have Eugene, who was a part of a lot of these episodes. Yes, and I, I do find it interesting that... Yeah. No, you're, you're definitely right. It is interesting to me that Eugene was around for years. They never really did anything with it. But now that he's gone, they suddenly do this big legacy episode. Yeah. And is that a bad thing? I don't necessarily think so. It's just... I don't think it's bad. I just think it's... If they do more legacy episodes, it's gonna be noticeable. Right, and that's actually why doing Clara would be a bad, a good idea, because Eugene's the one who heard that story. So him... I mean, him not being the episode might be a little weird, but it was a story told to Eugene, so it would give Wit an excuse to re-explain everything to Connie or somebody. I agree. You know what would be an interest? I mean, here's the problem. In the comic, they establish she's like eight. Yes, and that so that is one thing about the time, the shifting time. So when Odyssey starts, Wit's End's been open for four years. When Wit comes back, like three real world years later, he mentions Clara has grown into a beautiful young woman. Well, yeah, that so. Okay, well, Clara's probably like, right? She's probably like eight, like seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. At, then at the time, I was saying. You know, I was thinking of legacy characters bringing back. Like, you could try to bring in, like, Stuart Barkley and just, like, have that character start from scratch. But the problem is, like, we've established he's, like, eight in this comic. Yes. So you couldn't have him just be by himself for whatever reason. Maybe the family comes to visit Odyssey and Stuart gets to go on an adventure with somebody. Well, I was thinking if you wanted to, like, bring in a new character, but it's, like, it doesn't work because he's still so much a kid. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, so does do you have any other notes on this episode? I feel like we've kind of talked it into the ground. Um, No, I mean, I, I think it's a fine episode. I just think I don't, I don't fully buy, I guess, the end. It's, like, weird to me just that it's, like, oh, you never know what to expect from people. It's, like, well, that's true. And so, like, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, I guess. But it's just, like, it's, they, I feel like they tried too hard to make me be, like, whoa, she's a doctor? It's, like, right, because it doesn't really make sense that she's a doctor and then has also come back to acting. I'm sure that is a a story. Yeah, like, I'm sure that is, like, a thing that has happened before. It's just, like... I, it's like so extreme. I totally agree with that. And it feels like kind of an episode length apology to the people who maybe felt Heather Shapley was a bad representation of who they were. Yeah. I but, agree. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's a very good episode. It's an episode I'd kind of like more of, not a sequel episode, but just a let's go out and have a little fun type of episode. Like, I feel like this is the most fun wit's gotten to be in an episode in a while. I agree. Like, I was rolling with the first half. And the second half is not bad. It's not a bad episode by any means. I was just kind of like, oh, we're kind of switching gears a little bit. Right. Oh, that was the other thing from the podcast episode of Wit. So, you know, his name is Professor Walrus, which was never mentioned in the episode. Apparently, when the videos came out, the animated videos came out, people mentioned how much Wit looked like a walrus. Oh... So that's, that's kind of a, that's a funny callback. But I will say this, you know, in a, in a month, my cousin is getting married in Denver. So uh, John's wife is going to Colorado Springs to visit one of her friends. I really hope they're selling that merchandise they were talking about. In the they're not. In the family gift shop. I wish. They're not, though. Yeah. Other than that, did you do the web quest? No. All right. So basically, the video is a kid who has the largest collection of Adventures in Odyssey merchandise. It's fine. It's cute. You can tell he's having a lot of fun that he was recognized. How much merch is it? Is it a lot? I mean, right. So there's not that much Odyssey merch, but. So that's the problem, isn't it? Now, I don't want to make fun of this kid because it's a a big accomplishment. But it's kind of like me saying I just opened the largest McDonald's only for dogs. You know. He probably does. I mean, if I watch that video, it probably is like this is an impressive Odyssey collection. But it's also like, right, it's like Odyssey isn't like the most merch heavy thing. It was back in the day. But yeah. Sort that's of. true i guess so does he have a lot of classic merch it is a lot yes that's cool then like it, it's a cool video to watch and see some of that stuff and we're not trying to ra- drag the kid through the mud especially if he listens to this show it was a very cute segment yeah that sounds cool but yeah i i guess like if you it is true there was more merch in the past yes 
so than there is right now like i'm thinking right now where it's like there's like no like i feel like very little there's like the books and the cds and you can buy a fidget spinner off the website what i know did he have a fidget spinner i didn't see one but i also was kind of half watching it okay so it's that's cute though uh, maybe yeah. i'll give it a watch yeah it's a it's a very nice video Anyway, so that wraps up this episode. Join us next time for some more albums and our November news round of minutes. The episode still has not been announced yet, so we'll see what it is. I know the Christmas episode is the characters just sitting around telling Christmas stories to each other. So yeah. anyway, I'm Will. I'm John. We'll see you next time. <laughs>